Welcome back, Cardboard Warriors. I didn't mean to bump you around there at the very beginning. Just still working on this whole camera thing. Hopefully, you're having a great day today. Uh, we got another box of uh, Innistrad Midnight Hunt, the set boosters. Uh, I love that they put them in the normal size boxes now instead of those giant square things that were impossible to ship and always got banged up. But anyways, let's uh, break in here, see what we get. Looks like uh, a good myth X turn nerfed. Uh, Watchy knew that they were going to be chase cards, and they really nerfed them because a lot of people have been opening a lot of boxes, and I've seen very few pulls. I don't, I've only gotten one Ren and Seven so far, uh, so that's pretty pretty low considering this will be the fourth set box, and I have opened what six pre-release kits, maybe more. So I don't know if those stacks are even, but we'll find out in a minute here. Oh no, what stacks of cards are. To get this out of the screen without knocking too much stuff over. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's break in here, see what we get. Oh, yeah, full tabs. All right. How are you guys liking the set so far? I think it's a really cool set. Uh, not sure about the day-night mechanic thing. Still on the fence about that. It's it's a little a little hard to keep track of. I'm not going to sort out the comments on comments. All right, our first land. There we go. We got the overgrown farmland, the foil evolving wilds, and a flip token. All right, keep going through here. Hopefully we get the Wren. The Wren seems to be the, uh, the hardest chase card to get in here. Um, oh, nice, a Deserted Beats. I love that they put the full art uh, lands in the uh, kind of ancillary slot there. Pretty cool, those lands look great, the full art. Cigar to Splendor and Uncommon Farmhand as a Stone Giant for our first list card. I have no idea. It looks like it's from a dual deck or something that I wouldn't know. So, all right, moving on. So far, no mythics, but we got two of the rare land cycle, which is pretty cool. So, the mythics are where the money is at in this set. Here's a foil basic. These things are so gorgeous. I'm thinking I might actually keep the foil lands for myself out of this one. <laughs> Normally, I don't keep any kind of foils because I prefer the non foils. But uh, this one, I think I might change my mind. There's a Lizo Forgotten Archangel. Good card, a little pricey. And the Perforator, pretty cool. And Triple Perforator is the new version of the Scorch Spitter. Uh, it's a two drop, two one that deals one damage every time it attacks. So, doesn't fit in the Cavalcade decks, but those decks are kind of, I guess, passe now. Anyway, they're just not cool anymore. Well, the cool kids don't use them. Hey, 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 there we go. Speak of the devil. All right. Finally, number two. All right, I guess maybe they're not nerfed as bad as I thought they were. But still, I have not seen too many people open these. So this is only the second one I pulled. So there we go. Ren and seven for our first Mythic. It's a home run. Uh, I mean, not really. They're, they're not very expensive. I think the, the, the regular one's under 30 bucks already. So another Foil Island. Gorgeous card. Uh, so, you know, it's... It's a decent hit, but it's not. It's not like a like a hit from Modern Horizons two. <laughs> Modern Horizons two, your average rare was more than that. Uh, Brutal Cathar. It's gonna be a while before we get over that set. I think. Curse of Surveillance, Gone Foil, and a Simeon Spirit Guide. Nice. I love this card. Possibly one of my favorite cards. Um, the as a creature itself is terrible. <laughs> it's a Ape Spirit two two for three, but. Remove Simeon Spirit Guide in your hand from the game. Add a red mana to your mana pool. This is a, a must-have in Storm decks <laughs> because it's it's just so good. Um, it's a free mana. Just discard it from your hand. Free mana. So it's kind of like a mox you have to sacrifice. It's a it's a one-mana Black Lotus. It only works for one color. But <laughs> there we go. A foil Swamp. We're getting a bunch of the foil basics in this one. That's good. And a Ludovic Necrogenius. Turns into a uh, Oleg Ludovic's Hubris on the back. Uncommon Foil, and another list card. Another Time Spiral block. Uh, Lightning Axe. Great card. All right. Uh, Lightning Axe is great for Madness decks because uh, yeah, it, it, the extra cost is either discard a card or pay five. So it's either like a five damage uh, uh, fireball or. Uh, you discard a card, and with Madness, that's actually a good thing, because you want to discard your cards because they're cheaper, but they cast that way. So, 
All right, a Giza Glorious Resurrector with that with that weird uh, kind of almost foil border on it, but not really. This card is so good. I mean, unbelievably good. I can't believe how good this card is. And that's what unbelievably means, isn't it? Okay, I'm awake. Anyways, <laughs> Giza Glorious Resurrector. I played somebody on Arena the other night who had this card in their deck, and this card just trounced me. I was doing really good. I thought I had the game locked, and then they put this out and started killing off my creatures and then taking them and using them against me. I was like, what? <laughs> so this card is absolutely epic. Uh, now, the creatures that they steal do have decayed, but if you got that other card that tap three creatures and do one damage to, or each opponent loses one life or whatever, uh, then you don't have to attack with them, uh, so you don't have to worry about them dying. You can steal other people's creatures and then uh, use them to do damage to them. So, absolutely great card there. I'm surprised that one's not worth more. I'm, I'm shocked that one's not worth more. Pithing Needle, I love this card. This card's in pretty much every sideboard and every deck I have that it works in that format. And now it's in standard, so it'll be in every sideboard of my standard decks as long as it's uh, around. Uh, great card, just shuts down any card that's going to give you the big problems. Tireless Hauler, Foil, and a Zombie Token. Ah. Two backs left in stack number one. I think, I don't know, these things don't stack very well in these boxes. So, well, there's our signature card. You can actually see it on the camera this time. Nice. It's the uh, Stalking Predator from Lysitwain. All right. I probably mispronounced that. My bad. My apologies. All right. And our rare is Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, Common Foil, and an LML. All right. Last back stack number one. About a third of the way through the box now. Card, basic land, and Adelaine, Resplendent Cathar, and Colin Foil, and a flip token. All right, now we gotta move our rent over. Now I got an actual pile for the mythics that we only have one of. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, that's the one thing about the, all these sets compared to Modern Horizons 2 is MH2 one card can pay for the box. <laughs> Not so much in these. Uh, Siphon Insight. And a common showcase wall, pretty cool. And a double token. So the uh, the value on these standard sets looks pathetic compared to MH2. So it's going to take us a while to kind of get over that MH2 price memory thing. Oh, a second uh, signature card, cool. Just found out one of my guys at uh, one of my local game stores, one of the players is collecting those. So I was like, hey, I got a stack for you. Uh, all right, our second mythic is a commander card, Eloise uh, uh, Nefelia Sleuth. Okay, our second mythic, and next rare is the Falconrath Pit Fighter. Decent card, uh, not great, but decent. It's a one drop, two one, so that's good. And a full common and a wolf token. Yeah, so I guess some people actually do like these signature art cards. I think, uh, I don't know. I think until they're actually really signed and numbered, I don't think they're going to be much, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with them. And finally, another Mythic, and it's another good one, the Meat Hook Massacre. Uncommon Foil and a Zombie Token. And we're going to sleeve this one, too, because this is another big hit in the set. The Meat Hook Massacre, great card. Uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty effective. All right, we'll see what happens with it, but... Uh, but it's pretty pretty strong right now. And next pack, Unnatural Growth for one of the better rares in the set. And a common foil and spider. So about halfway through the box, we've gotten two of the best mythics you can get. And but we only have three. <laughs> so not a lot of mythics, but they're good mythics. So I don't complain about that. Hey, there we go. Hostile hostile. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, I don't think I pulled this card yet. The Hostile Hostile. <laughs> and then the Creeping In. Oh, yeah, I have pulled this card before. All right. So, fourth Mythic and, oh, fifth Mythic. Alinda the Dusk Rose from uh, Return, uh, Return, Rivals of Ixalan. <laughs> Return to Ixalan. Uh, technically, yeah. <laughs> so, Alinda the Dusk Rose from our list card spot Mythic. All right. I have noticed it seems like you get a little bit better spread of mythics and rares in a list spot in uh, this set than in previous sets. Um, in these set boosters. Uh, so, it does seem like you get a little bit better mythic and rare pulls. 
uh, Curse of Obsession. So hopefully they're actually trying to fix the, the list to make it a little more reasonable. Slow Gurt, the Overslime. Oh, and a Foil Giza right behind him. Nice. So Foil Rare Giza. C is good. I have a feeling that card's going to go up. I'm surprised it's not getting more respect already. Um, I guess people just haven't been playing with it enough to really see how effective it is. But especially in black where you got tons of removal, that card is priceless. It's going to be a great card. I could be wrong. Mask of Grizzle Brand. I've been around before. Uncommon Flame Chandler Foil and a minigame. We're going our way through here. Try not to make the video too long. I don't like the pull tabs. Teperi. Are we going to pull a Teperi? That'd be awesome. If we pulled a Teperi and a Ren in the same box, that'd be epic. Sludge Monster. I think that's what I did in the last one. And a Common Fall and Advertising. All right. So, four Mythics, four List Buffs, two Rare Lands. And hopefully we get some more goodness. Suspicious Stowaway with the uh, Seafaring Werewolf on the back. Stuffed Bear, who's actually very, very good and sealed. And a Human Token. All right, last pack of stack number two. Two-thirds of the way through the box. Let's hope we pull some more value here. Storm the Festival, and not so much value. <laughs> and an Elementalist, and a Spirit Token. All right, last stack. Hopefully we get some good packs at the end here. Need some more Mythics, I think. And Curse of Leeches, and there we go. A Foil Mythic, a Sigardian Savior. Not one of the better Mythics, and it feels like it's twice as thick as a regular card. But there you go. I wonder if they're doing that on purpose. I've noticed the foil rares and mythics have been a little bit thicker lately. Some of the commons and uncommons too. I'm wondering if they're kind of thickening up the cardboard to try and stop the curling. I wonder. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is that a, the alternate art Ren in 7? I think it is. Um, unfortunately, it's just the art card, not the actual card. And a primal adversary for the next mythic. There we go. And a foil rare in the same pack. Old stick fingers. And a Veil of Summer. Wow, that was a pretty uh, pretty wild pack. So a Veil of Summer from M20. M20? Yeah, M20. This is like a $5 uncommon. $5 or $6 uncommon. Might be more. Oh, no, wait. I think they're like 10 bucks now, aren't they? 10 or 12? Wow. Yeah, that's a great uncommon. So there you go. Veil of Summer. Great card. I didn't expect to see that on the list, but I didn't realize it was on there. All right. So, here we go. Malevolent Hermit and Benevolent Geist on the back. And then a Silver Bolt and a Blight Sickle. Okay, that's pretty cool. From uh, Shadow War, I think. Yep, that was right around the time I stopped playing the second time and sold my collection like a dummy. And I've been kicking myself big time since I got back into the game because I could have retired on that collection if I still had it. All right, sold for five grand. Probably worth about a half million now. Uh, Visions of Duplicity, all right, Old Stick Fingers non-foil, and a foil field of ruin. If you're going to get a foil uncommon, that's probably the one to get. That's definitely one of the best uncommons in the set. All right, Good old reprint machine. Is that Chandra? I didn't know Chandra was in this set. Is Chandra in this set? What's going on here? All right, we got to light up the night. Hey, oh. There we go. <laughs> Chandra is not in the set, but apparently she's on a card in the set. So there we go. Late of the night. Plummet and a wolf token. I'm going to knock these over if I don't do something. I'm probably going to knock them over no matter what I do. All right, I'll put them over there. <laughs> there we go. Getting towards the end. Oh, we pulled another Ren and 7 art. So that's two Ren and 7 arts in here. And a Ren and 7. Are we going to get a second Ren and 7? That would be epic. Briar Bridge Trekker and another foil rare, the Smoldering Egg. That's pretty cool. Let's fall on both sides because it comes the, becomes the Ashmouth Dragon if you're casting a lot of instants and sorceries. Somebody uh, I played against in at the pre-release actually put that in their deck, but they didn't have a lot of instants and sorceries. I'm like, you realize you're never going to transform that thing, right? <laughs> Ghoul Colors Harvest and a Kissing Naturalist. These... These uh, showcases just look gorgeous. 
human. Uh, could just be because the showcase is in uh, Modern Horizons 2, the sketch thing, and then the uh, the D and D showcases were just awful looking cards. It just makes these look better. But no, I think they actually are. Our third Giza, holy moly! So we got uh, a foil. Uh, a foil showcase, a regular showcase, and a regular the regular version now. So three geezas in one box. That's awesome because, uh, like I said, I think that card's going to go up. And a zombie with a mini game on the back. Three packs left. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the geezer. But uh, I really think I mean, four mana for a 4-4 four, four that's uh, got all those abilities and steals your opponent's creatures. Foil Mountain, gorgeous. And uh, this creepy thing. All right. And the Serith, the Viper's Fang for our next rare. And no way out. And a flip token. All right. Two packs left. We've gotten six Mythics. I'd like to see another good Mythic hit. That'd be pretty awesome, but I'm not you know, holding my breath on that. All right. Visions of Glory for the Commander card. Still knocking over this pile, even though I took half the pile away. Denik, Pius Apprentice. Wasn't that a rare in the first pack? Yeah, I think so. Or maybe not. Uh, and then the Pious Aberration on the back. Common Foil and a Fodder Cannon. <laughs> Hilarious card from uh, Urza's um, Destiny. And that's Urza's Destiny. All right. No way back machine. Last pack. Are we going to get another spicy hit at the close? Or are we going to go out kind of with a whimper here? And we're going out with a whimper. Dire Strain, Rampage, Fall Common, and a minigame. There we go. So, overall, I think we pretty good we had a lot of fall rares in here let me find them all there's a smoldering egg the old stick fingers the giza with the showcase um so that's three rares and the foil mythic the Sigardian savers savior so that's pretty good our list spot was awesome uh well not awesome but pretty good uh fodder cannon blade sickle the veil of summer great Lend of the Dusk Rose, I think, might be worth something. Lightning Ash is pretty cool. Simeon Spirit Guide great. And then there's Stone Giant. So, not bad. We only got two of the rare land, which is kind of a bummer. But we did get one uh, full art. And we got the, the one overgrown farmland. And our Mythics were the big hits of the box. We got the Primal Adversary, the Foils, the Guardian Savior, the Hostile Hostile, the Meat Hook Massacre, Alois and the Ren and Seven. So we did actually pull a Ren. So good box. Uh, don't think I can complain too much about that one. I think uh, in the future when these boxes are a lot more expensive and these hopefully chase cards are worth a lot more, people will watch this video and go, oh man, that was such a good box. So <laughs> now we got two of the signed art cards. Woo, ah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out the description below. A lot of good links to sales on Magic Card right now. Really good prices and uh, they're all from Watsi on Amazon, so they're direct from the horse's mouth there. So you don't have to worry about any repacks or anything like that. Um, my email address is down there if you want to talk to me about buying singles or sponsoring an opening. And my actual address is down there if you want to send me something to open on camera for you. And I really appreciate you guys' time and all the support. It means the world to me, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Bye.